back everyone, it's the Bourbon Judge. Today we're gonna go ahead and dive into some Texas bourbon. So, uh, Texas, uh, let's call him Texas Terrence, <laughs> reach out to me. Um, he's actually oddly enough from Delaware, but Texas, reached, uh, Texas Terrence reached out last week uh, part in the comments and say, hey, Bourbon Judge, why don't you dive into some Texas bourbon, right? So I was like, you know, let's go ahead and do it. I've never, ever had a chance to review Texas bourbon on the Bourbon Judge channel, right? So let's go ahead and dive into it. So when you think about Texas bourbon, a couple things come to mind, right? Who are the distilleries? So you have, I'm thinking off here, you have Balcones, you have Iron Root, but everyone, and everyone, all the hype goes to Garrison Brothers, right? So Garrison Brothers, based out of High Texas, um, about 60 miles away from Austin, Texas. You know, really cool bottle designs, um, very well known, has a great brand, and um, this is one that I thought would be a great little uh, chance to get onto the channel. So, before we dive into Garrison Brothers, when you just think about, you know, what makes Texas bourbon different than like Kentucky bourbon or just bourbon in general, right? So all bourbon, Texas or, or Kentucky, obviously, of course, has to be at least 51% corn from the mash bill, and the other 49% is a blend of like your rye, wheat, malted barley. And then, um, but most Kentucky bourbons truly typically go with like a 60, 65% corn, and that other 40% is the blend of those other three, the rye, wheat, or malted barley. Texas is just different, right? <laughs> Texas kind of beats their own drum, they're just completely different. And that's the way Texas is, which is cool, and I love that. Great state. So Texas is different for a couple of reasons. Number one, they use their own local panhandle corn. And there's a couple of different varieties that they use. But the main difference of what makes Texas bourbon, Texas bourbon, <laughs> if you will, is the fact that they use a high corn mash bill. So uh, let's call it like in the 80 to 85% uh, range from a corn uh, perspective goes into the mash bill and then the other 15 to 20 percent is the blend of either like the rye malted barley or wheat that's the main difference right they are a high corn mash bill um, type bourbon um, and when you think about garrison brothers in general they don't give you the exact breakdown uh, but they do of course also use a high corn mash bill they also use a soft red winter wheat and last but not least, they throw in a little bit, of, little bit of barley in there as well, just kind of round it all about. And when you think about Texas bourbon, it's so different because the heat, it's just hot as hell in Texas, right? So the heat, the bourbon, it just expands and contracts, right, it, it, within the barrels. So it really brings out different and unique flavors that you typically don't, do not get in Kentucky bourbon, which, you know, because Kentucky has all four seasons. So that's really the core difference. All right. So let's dive into Garrison Brothers. So they've been around since, gosh, 2008. More recently well known, they have, let's think about the different versions they have. They have a small batch, they have a rye, they have one that's finished like with like a honey. Um, that one's like 80 proof. I saw it, the honey sounded really cool and I was like, 80 proof? Mm -mm -mm -mm. I can't mess with that. Um, the top of the line, right, the top dog is one called the Cowboy. I mean cowboy, right? And that one is a uncut, unfiltered, 133.9 proof bourbon. A little expensive. Uh, Garrison Brothers in general is just expensive, right? It is what it is. That one is $225. I have sampled it, courtesy of my man Brian from Beginning Bourbon. And I'll tell you folks, that is some phenomenal bourbon, right? It's just damn good. It really is. So um, maybe I can get that on the channel again or at some point. Brian, I might need you to... <laughs> Send me another two ounce sample. <laughs> but uh, what are we gonna review today? Which version of Garrison Brothers? We're gonna review the Balmoray. Now as you can tell, this is a beautiful bottle. Nice little metal on the back. Um, you see here on the front, it won uh, 2020 a double gold award. And just some more facts about this one. So comes in at 115 proof. Um, as you can tell, the color I pulled a little bit, I'm probably gonna pour a little bit more, it's been a long day. Uh, very deep, dark red, uh, 115 proof. What's cool about this one is that it's actually aged four years and then they dump it 
and then they barrel it again. So it's a double barrel, it goes through a whole double barrel process and they barrel it again for an additional year in the second barrel, right? So in all, five years. Now here's the thing, price standpoint, oof. This bad boy is $165. And where I live in the Northeast, I see Garrison Brothers here and there. It's typically like the small batch. It's not the, I never see the Cowboy and I never ever see this one here, the Balmeray. So I actually acquired this one in a trade. I knew somebody down in Texas. He wanted something that I had and I wanted something that he had, which is the Balmeray, right? So it's a little bit harder to find in certain places in the US and internationally, not sure how challenging it is to find internationally, but very challenging to find in the US within itself, right? Um, so let me go ahead and get to the nose a little bit. So I will say another cool thing about uh, Garrison Brothers is that when they first started out, because the Texas heat, especially like near Austin, is just so damn hot, they actually had to make custom barrels, right? A little bit thicker because literally they, they truly actually burst, right? It was just, it was just, it was a mess. Literally, it was a mess. They wasted, unfortunately, a lot of bourbon, but like anything else, right? They got it down to science and now they're rocking and rolling. So again, this one's won a lot of awards, a lot of great hype. So let's see whether or not if it's really worth $165 and more important folks, is it worth the hunt? All right. So from a no standpoint, so, mm, gosh, it's so just deep and rich. When I, when I get the nose, there's so many, you know, you think of like normal bourbon, right? Traditional bourbon is your caramel, your brown sugar, vanilla, some cinnamon and some oak, right? This is so different. I get, wow, number one, I get red wine. I get some like coffee in there, like a toffee, but co maybe actually more coffee actually. Some red wine, some coffee, some uh, like like dark, like maybe like uh, blackberries, a little bit of fruity, some burnt brown sugar, so not just standard, a little bit of caramel, and a little bit of pepper, but mostly like that wine, like that red wine, uh, almost like a Merlot, as well as um, like coffee that really stands out in the nose and the burnt brown sugar. Those three things just stand out in the nose. It's so different. You can see how dark that is, right? That is just some dark bourbon, boy. Whew. You know, I said I was gonna pour a little bit more. Uh, hold on. I am gonna pour some more. You guys know the bourbon does love some deep pours. Um, uh, all right, so the last thing I'll say, the uh, master distiller, Donis Todd, He's really changed the game up a lot, actually, because like, you know, I've actually read that they actually, a lot of times will fill the barrels only like 65, 70%, right? And they move them around. They do some very cool, unique things, right? Because they want to just kind of think outside the box and hey, can't knock it until you try it, right? All right, as I say each and every week, cheers, salute, thank you. Uh, for all my patrons out there supporting the Bourbon Judge, I really appreciate you guys and gals uh, helping me out. If you haven't done thus far, please check out my Patreon site below. The link's right below. Uh, please also make sure you do me three favors. Number one, hit the like button. Number two, drop me a comment now or at the end, whenever you want. You know I love this, of going back and forth. And last but not least, please hit that big, huge red subscribe button. Subscribe. All right. Cheers, everyone. Ooh. Wow. That is, um, whew. that's pretty powerful. That's only 115 proof, but that is a very robust palette. It goes down, it is a long and hard and powerful finish. This is about as Texas as Texas is gonna get. <laughs> this is no joke. Oh man. I'll tell you, for a bourbon that's only technically five years age, it sips like a bourbon that's aged like 12, 13 years, right? Lots of great quality. Let me get a little bit more before I, uh, before I give you um, my final verdict. That nose is so unique. It's so unique and so different. It's unlike anything in either one of these cabinets. It's completely different, folks. And I mean completely. It's interesting because when I had the Cowboy, right? The top of the line version. That one, whoo, that put some hair on your chest. <laughs> you think this is powerful? That puts some straight up hair on your chest. All right. Mm. 
Mm. Wow. Everything from that nose transfers to the palate. That is, you know, so the, the three things that really stand out. Number one, you do have that, that burnt, like uh, brown sugar. You also have that red wine kind of a mixed taste in there. Some of the cherries and blackberries as well. And last but not least, a very small or a good portion of uh, coffee that's in there, right? It's all kind of blended together. It's so unique. It's so different. Folks, you guys know me. Is it worth buying or is it leaving on the shelf and just give it the deuces? You guys know I always keep it real no matter what. The verdict is in. You know how much I love that cowboy, right? I told you about that one. This <laughs> is a mistrial. We have our first ever mistrial. So, I know what you think. You guys are like, come on, Bourbon Judge. Why? What's the reason why? All right. So, honestly, I actually enjoy the hell out of this. I think it's very, very good. The challenge is, I think it's slightly overpriced, right? It's a buck 65, so $165. In my opinion, just in my opinion only, it should be closer to $115, right? It should actually almost match the proof, right? Funny enough. I think it's great, it's great quality, it's very unique. Again, even though it's only aged five years, it does sip like a bourbon that's aged 10, 12 years because of the, the heat intensity in Texas. And I think it's great quality, right? Here's the reason why I give it a mistrial. Primarily is the price, but I will say, right, if you have a couple extra dollars, as Cousin Anita says, if you just got your taxes back and you got an extra 50 bucks, you're like, you know what, it's worth trying. I do think it's worth trying. I do think it's worth buying if your pockets, if your money, you know, if, if it allows you to, right? However, if money's a little bit tight, you know, maybe try it at a bar before you go out and run and buy a bottle of it. I do think it's great quality. It just kind of depends on your actual financial status. Just being honest with you, right? But I don't want to, you know, give it a, a do not buy because I don't want to, you know, blemish the brand. I think it's actually fantastic and I like it a lot for me. But I'm not going to run out and just tell everyone out there to go spend $165. If I have another $165, I don't know if I would buy another bottle of this. I probably would maybe change it up and buy something different, a couple that come to mind. And that's the reason why I had to give it a miss, y'all. I got to keep it real. Folks, as I say each and every week, Thank you, cheers, peace, salute. Talk to you soon, later.